Welcome to Investigation 2.2. This was called Up and Down the Staircase Exploring Slope. The focus question for this investigation is how do you write an equation for a linear function if you're given a graph, a table, or two points? So primarily we're, we were focused on slope for this investigation. However, I'm going to also focus us in on the y-intercept because as you now know after Investigation 2.3 and 2.4, you will be able to write an equation given those two bits of data because we are looking at an equation format of y equals mx plus b. And we eventually want that to look like y is equal to some number times x plus another number. Oops, that's not a number, that's a letter. Whoops, here we go. So something like this, where the slope is 2 and the y-intercept is 5. So I want you to get looking for slope and y-intercept through this investigation. So let's move on and play around with this. Finding slope and y-intercept from tables. So let's zoom in and look at a couple of these tables. Here we go. We have x and all the um, various inputs and we have y and all the various outputs that go along with those x's. So as we know with functions, if you put something in for x, only one number should come out for y, otherwise it is not a function. So playing around with this idea, let's look at the differences in the x's. How are we increasing or decreasing? In this case, it looks like we're increasing by 3, then we're increasing by 3, and increasing by 4. Now I know based on our gut instinct, we are supposed to now say, ooh, it's not a linear function. Not linear. But what's important is we don't just pay attention to the x, or x inputs, but we also pay attention to the y outputs. If the y's increase with the same sort of scale factor that the x's do, then it is in fact linear. So let's look at just that. Let's look at how these y's increase or decrease. We have 20 to 8. To do that, we have to subtract 12. 8 to a negative 4. Again, we have to subtract 12. Now, if this is linear, we need to see an appropriate sort of scale factor to increase this 12 to be something else. So I'm anticipating it being upwards of 15 or more. So 14 to get, or negative 4 to get to negative 20, I need to subtract 16. That's good. I want to see that sort of thing. So now our job is to figure out the actual slope. Slope means rise over run. That means dependent variable y over independent variable x. Our y's in this case are negative 12 over a positive 3 for the first two points, and we also have a negative 16 over a positive 4. And it's important that we try both of these slopes to make sure they end up being the same. If they are the same, then we have a linear equation. And then we can say, ha, huh, to the heck with that. So negative 12 divided by 3, that gets us, we need to divide by 3 on the top, divide by 3 on the bottom, and we will get negative 4 over a positive 1 or negative 4 for our slope. We want to get the same thing for that negative 16 over 4. So let's divide by 4 on the bottom. And if we do that, we need to divide by 4 on the top to keep our scale factor the same. And we get negative 4 over 1. Exactly the same thing as what was happening before. So we have a slope of negative 4. What's also important for us to pay attention to is that y-intercept. So we need to figure out what our y-intercept is. Our y-intercept is always where x crosses or where x crosses at 0. So let's look for that point. x is 0 here. Our y is 20. So there are our two points. We have or there is one of our points. We have y-intercept at 0, 20, so it crosses the y-axis at 20, and we have a slope of a negative 4. So we could technically write an equation for that and say y is equal to negative 4x plus 20. So that's kind of cool. Let's do the same thing for this next table below. We have 
an increase of three each time, just like the table above. And what's nice is it's each and every time it's like that, not just at their convenience like the last table. And we have 20 to 11, so we need to subtract 9 to get there. 11 to 2, which is also a subtraction of 9. 2 to negative 7, we also have subtracting 9. So our slope, rise over run, is equal to our dependent variable. We got a change of negative 9 over our independent variable, change of 3. Negative 9 divided by 3 equals negative 3 as our slope. So our slope equals negative 3. Now, in this case, we also have a y-intercept of 0, 20. However, if we didn't have a y-intercept, if the x never became 0, all we would need to do is play around with that whole concept of scale factor, looking at this rise over run, and play around with it a little bit, move it around, and we'd find our y-intercept. Our y-intercept in this case, though, is 20. So we have y is equal to negative 3x plus 20. So that's kind of cool. Let's try something else now. We need to find slope and y-intercept from graphs. In this first graph, let's zoom in a little bit on this baby. On this first graph, it looks like we need to pay attention to rise over run, and I usually like to pay attention to rise over run based on the y-intercept if I can. And so I have a y-intercept right there where it crosses the y-axis at 0, 3. So we can write down our y-intercept right away being 3. I put one too many dashes right there. Now let's look at our rise over our run. It looks like our rise is right here. Rise is equal to 3. There's a change in 1, 2, 3 units. And our run in this case is a change of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. So rise over run means 3 over 6, which can be simplified to 1 half. So our slope is equal to 1 half. So we can create the equation y is equal to 1 half x plus 3. Let's look at this other graph over here. We need to once again create a rise over or figure out our slope rise over run and we also need to figure out the y-intercept. In this case though we don't have a y-intercept that looks like it's readily available. It looks like this line will continue up a little ways, but we don't know exactly where. So let's first pay attention to slope. Slope can sometimes help us work backwards to find our y-intercept. So I'm going to look at these two points that are given to us. We have 218 and 66. So if I look at this, let's look at our rise. Our rise between these two points, 18 down to 6, that means it goes down 12 units. And our run in this case, is going from 2 to a positive 6, which is a plus 4. There's our run. Rise over run tells us we have negative 12 over a positive 4, which simplifies down to negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. That is our slope. So if our slope is negative 3, we could also write 3 or negative 3 as negative 3 over 1. Rise over run. And we're going to now take this and work it backwards a little bit. If we were to take that concept and work it backwards, we can go back 1 unit and up 3. And if you notice, all of our units are, or all of our little tick marks are going up by two, or going up by twos. And then we'd have to work it back one unit and go up three. So our first initial one went back to one twenty-one, right here. And our next one, if we went back one, we went to zero. We're getting our y-intercept, and we're going up three to twenty-four. So our y-intercept is 24. Our final equation, y is equal to negative 3x plus 24. 
that's kind of cool. We're playing around with this whole concept. If you can see, I've drawn a lot on my graphs and I expect you to do the same on the quiz, but play around with this whole idea of rise over run and working backwards with it. Let's do one last type of equation because this will be on the quiz as well. Finding slope and y-intercept from two points. You will at least need to find slope given two points. You might not need to find y-intercept. However, we can do it. We have an x and a y point and an another x and a y point. One way we could one way we could find the slope and the y-intercept, which is really helpful, is actually making a graph. So you could totally graph these and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and actually graph them. So we have 0, 15 up here. I can't quite do it. 0, 15. And we have 5, 3. And then we'd be looking at the rise over the run of this situation. So we're going to be looking at how far did we go up from or, or down. So we can look at how far we went down from the y-intercept. We went from 15 to 3, so that's down 12 units. And then how far did we go over? We went from 0 to 5, which is 5 units. So our slope in this case is negative 12 over 5. Our y-intercept, which is awesome and given to us, is 15. So we could essentially write an equation y is equal to 12 over 15x plus 15. One other way that we can find the slope and the y-intercept would also be using the slope formula. So let's do that with this equation. The slope formula is looking at the change in y's over the change in x's. So when I write change, I mean subtraction. So let's look at this. We have y's here and we have x's here. So let's look at this. 2 minus a negative 4, there's our change, over negative 2 minus 4. So there's our change in y's versus our change in x's. So 2 minus a negative 4, we can really say that's pause, or adding 2 plus 4 equals 6. Subtracting a negative means you're adding. And negative 2 minus 4 equals negative 6. So 6 divided by a negative 6 equals negative 1. So there is our slope. Negative 1. Now from there, you just have to kind of work it out if I'm going doing a rise over run situation, negative one over a positive one. That's essentially how we can also rewrite a negative one. We can now manipulate this whole concept of rise over run given these points. Let's look at negative two over two, or negative two, two. And so for every change that we do in x, we need to change a little bit in the y. So if we were doing negative one over one, we could eventually say, well, if this is a negative 2, we could turn it into a negative 1. This 2 equals a positive 1. We could also say that it then goes to 0, 0. So there is our y-intercept, which is 0. So our final equation for this particular problem would be y is equal to negative 1, x plus 0. But no matter what, if you're not understanding this slope equation, graph every single time. Graphing something, especially if you have graph paper, can be very helpful in visualizing what you're doing. So hopefully this video helped you out a little bit. And, and I hope that you are able to find the slope given a graph, a table, or two points. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.